Hello everyone, today's Friday, November 2nd, and we're gonna head out into our garden and see how our plants are doing. If you're visiting us from Growing Your Greens, welcome. John recently visited our garden, which is a huge honor, and for him to share with you some of the things that we're growing is really awesome. So um, today we're gonna go out to the garden and see how some of our plants are growing since his visit and we'll talk about some of the things that we're working on and some of the things that we have uh, in store for the next few months coming up. And if you have a few moments, join me out in the garden and see how our plants are doing. So we're gonna start off by looking at probably what is gonna be the main portion of our backyard garden now. And we have some garlic that are poking out of these two beds here now. These landscape flats are here to protect the bed from critters that come digging in the night for for grubs and usually when they do dig they disturb our planting and with a few varieties of garlic in here it's gonna really jumble things up so we're gonna lose track of what's been planted if they mix it all up where we have our pots of blueberry plants we used to have some Oaxacan green corn plants so this is the harvest of our corn and we hope to make some green tamales. If you've ever driven through Tucson and had uh, some tamales from the Tucson uh, Tamale Company, they make some green tamales. But this is uh, the type of corn that the Zab Zabotec people use to make their tamales with. So we're going to see if we have enough corn to make some green tamales. Tamales are really delicious and something that I've always wanted to try to make for myself. So uh, this is going to really motivate us to try to achieve that challenge. Um, as far as this area here, we have our blueberry plants that we still need to figure out where we're going to put them. I think we're going to put them back there on the raised bed area. And this space here is ready for planting. We just need to put get some plants started and get them planted. Um, we have some Zabrun shallots that have been sowed here and let's see if we can find if any have poked out. Nope. Oh, you can barely see some green. I don't know if it's being picked up here. They're starting to poke up out the soil here. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of a potential space right now. We just got to get back on track in terms of gardening. We're, we were out in the Mojave Preserve recently and exploring our uh, the deserts of the southwestern part of the United States, the Mojave Desert, and also the the desert that is part of Joshua Tree. So we have our uh, heritage breed ducks, and these guys are getting close to six months old. On the left is a blue runner duck. His name is Wade. On the right is Domino. She's a blue Swedish duck, and we're expecting to get some eggs from her in the next couple of weeks. So. Uh, that will be very exciting. And then we come down this way, we have tomatoes and fall tomatoes has been a bucket list item for me and it's nice to see that we are getting some fall tomatoes. So these are San Marzano. The leaves are nice and green which means that they're not being affected by, um, what is it, spider mites. So in the, in the cooler times of the year they're susceptible to spider mites so that's a challenge. We have some volunteer nasturtium that are growing, and um, yeah, oh look, we have some San Marzano that are ripening, so it's starting to get its orange color. And we come down this way, um, let's look at our giant four hook shard. This has been an interesting plant, it hasn't bolted, and it's been growing, it survived through the 110 degree heat wave that we had in the summer and then we have a yellow squash that we're going to take the seeds and save them for next year and we have some artichoke that are growing and the moral blood oranges are getting their color so in a couple months we'll be getting some blood oranges from this tree um, pass some of the plants here and look at more tomatoes. This is a paste tomato. This is one variety that is um, something that we're growing for the first time here. And 
The name of it is Prinsip Borghese. This is the size of the tomato that it produces. And then over here we have some ox heart tomatoes. This is also a variety that is uh, not new but to the growing community but new to our garden. And if we come around this way, we have the rest of our space that we grow. And as a quick aside, this space is going to change hopefully sometime next year. We're looking into expanding the square footage of our house from a thousand to something a little bit larger so we can be comfortable in it with our two kids. So we're probably going to lose this planter here and that planter here over there and we're gonna have to move it someplace um, something that we're excited about and have been taking um, a lot of our uh, good time and making sure we plan this thing properly and and also for me coming out here and thinking about how to plant it so that we can still grow our plants um, it's a nice it's a nice problem in this corner we had some ginger plants and um, we've since harvested our ginger plants and we have a really nice harvest of ginger. This is our first ever harvest. We tried some last year, didn't get anything good out of it and this is something that we are super proud about. Uh, the, the brown peel of the ginger has come in and the, the callus that it's developed helps to protect the rhizome from um, being rotten, getting rotten or eaten. When you first harvest it, the ginger rhizome has a more delicate look to it and the outside is a little bit more transparent like this area here. So we're super happy about this. This is the size of the rhizome that you would find at the farmer's market. So this is very typical when you grow ginger in an organic manner so yeah something to build on and we'll for sure be talking about growing ginger in more detail in the future video one of the things as you will find as a gardener is challenges of space so we have some loofah that's growing along this telephone line this is not by design the original design was to let the plant grow onto the patio but it's too hot up there and the plant keeps wanting to come down this way initially I thought the wind was blowing the vines over so we would weigh down the vine with a piece of stick. Um, the vine stayed, but then it didn't like it. We knew it didn't like how hot it is up there because it grew uh, vines, additional uh, new vines, and it grew away from the top. So something that we, something that we discovered. Um, over here, we're resting our bed, and we have more tomatoes that we're growing. So this is a beef master tomato and we have more tomatoes this way this is the kellogg's breakfast tomato that is from march's planting so um when the original plant started to diminish in production we cut it back and wanted to not disturb the soil and just kind of let the roots break down but this plant grew a new shoot and we wanted to see what would happen so from that shoot it grew a plant and we had um, a couple of nice large tomatoes and then we have some end of the season tomatoes. And over here um, we have some copia tomato and this is one that's variegated. It's a really nice tomato. We tried growing some earlier this year but the seeds got mixed up. So this is a second planting. So it's a really pretty tomato. And then next to the copia are some brandy wines. And then next to the brandy wine is a Cherokee purple, and this is this um, Frankenstein-looking tomato is actually from a mega bloom. Uh, what a mega bloom is 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 that it's two blossoms that are fused together, and you end up with this giant tomato. So normally in the past we would pick it off, but these are pretty cool-looking tomatoes. So we'll, we'll let those turn into this nice-looking, oddly-shaped tomato, which is perfect for Halloween which is which has just passed and then our other tomato vining tomato is this black prince tomato and it's produced a couple the leaves are still nice and green so 
Um, not too worried about it. Even though the weather's starting to cool off and tomatoes don't really like it too cold. And down in front, we have Roma tomatoes. And we have some that are in the process of ripening. At this time of year, critters are hungry and thirsty, so we can't let them ripen on the vine. So when they start to turn orange like this, we'll take them off and let them finish off inside. When they turn red, they um, are too appetizing to the critter. So this one is not exactly orange yet, so we'll leave it on here for a little bit longer. And that pretty much concludes our update today. We have plants that we want to sow um, winter crops like the Chinese mustards and stuff. So we had some sowed but then we went on our camping trip and wasn't able to keep them watered. So we're gonna restart our, our plants. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it today. So thanks for visiting.